psychedelic drugs are as important to the study of UFOs as the telescope was to the redefining of astronomy. You can meet the alien. You can meet the alien tomorrow night if your connections are good enough. <laughs> and you can meet the alien over and over and over again. You said this was what you wanted, baby. It's on its way. It's being served. Uh, the anxiety that society feels about psychedelic drugs, and notice psychedelic drugs do not cause addiction, ruin lives, or inspire people to rob banks or any of that. Psychedelic drugs, nothing has ever been adduced against them except that they give you funny ideas. Well, I think this is a crowd familiar with being stigmatized for dealing in funny ideas. They haven't made UFOs illegal, but they certainly have made psychedelics illegal. This is because this is the portal. DMT is, you know, kind of a portal or, you know, kind of a door for the transport of the spirit out of the body, it, it appears to me. What this is, is literally like a portal to the afterlife. It allows you to sneak a peek Jesus. over there and come back. It's mind-blowing. This is the portal. The secret is out. It isn't going to be a top-down revelation. It isn't going to come on McNeil Lehrer or the cover of Time. There will not be an announcement from the White House press office. Anybody who has that vision of how it works has completely given away their own power. You are not to be a consumer of the UFO. It is not for your amusement. It is for your transformation. And you can play the game of waiting with the uninitiated, or you can simply go look at the end of the movie. Shamans have been doing this for at least uh, probably 100,000 years. And it's a, it's a process of opening to an experience, not an ideology. It's not an ideology. It's an experience. Now you need to just take it uh, one vibratory level over and cut your teeth on what we've been putting up with for years which is these alien entities that are so easily contacted and dealt with through the intercession of the psilocybin and DMT family of compounds. Uh, I want to describe my DMT experience just to let you know how alien it is, and then we can discuss this a little. DMT, which is a near relative of psilocybin, psilocybin I mentioned, 4 plus 4 oxy NNDMT. Now I want to talk about NNDMT. This is a compound, the commonest hallucinogen in nature. Note that, because if an alien were spreading hallucinogens around, this would be the one to look at. It's the commonest one. You smoke it. It only lasts three to seven minutes. Not long, folks. Anybody can invest three to seven minutes, I would think, in an experiment which might alter your complete ontology. What happens when you smoke DMT? There is a mandalic pattern which forms, which is identifiable as what pharmacologists call preliminary hypnagogia. It just simply means that the brain-mind system is saying, yes, exotic indoles are arriving at the synaptic receptors in unexpected numbers. Yes, we are monitoring this situation. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. That goes on for about 30 seconds, and then you are propelled through it into a place. A place, not a state of mind. A place. You are instantly plunged into an environment of elf intelligence, self-transforming machine elves. They are not 
cheerfully portrayed and suitable material for t-shirts and coffee mugs. They are self-transforming, jeweled, basketball-like things. It's not clear they are made of matter. They are made of light. Twenty seconds before, you were in an apartment somewhere with your scuzzy friends doing drugs. <laughs> now that's gone. And you are in this place being confronted by these entities. And one of the things they do that's quite disconcerting is they come jumping up or dribbling up to you, and then they will sort of vibrate in place. Then they jump into your chest. Then they jump back out. But the main thing is, they are doing something. They use a language which you can see. They can condense meaning before your very eyes. For them, syntax is not acoustical rules. It's pictorial rules. And they are doing this. They will scramble forward, elbowing each other, jumping up and down, very excited. And they say, look at this. Look at this. And they pull objects, sing objects into existence and show them to you. And as your attention goes into these things, you, you are, it's, the emotion is indescribable. These objects are made of gold, ivory, smaragdine, chalcedony, beryllium, terbium, flesh, gold, blood, heat, tears, and it's all changing, morphing as you look at it. And as you look at this, you have without an iota of doubt the conviction, if I could bring this thing across, it would end human history. Argument would cease. You would just say, Look, look at this. And they're pushing each other away, showing you, look at this one, look at this one. These objects themselves emit sound and make other objects. The whole thing is going on in an atmosphere of incredible hilarity and confusion. It's now one minute since you left your scuzzy friends in that badly furnished apartment. Naturally, this, the, ha, the fact that you're having this experience raises certain fundamental questions, such as, am I dead now? Is that what's happened? And the entities say, they say, don't give way to amazement. Don't flip out about how you can't believe it and it's impossible and so forth and so on. Don't do that. Just pay attention. Pay attention to what we are doing and what we are showing you. And what they preach is a new dispensation of language, a language that can be beheld. And as you sit there, you feel like a bubble form in your stomach and begin to make its way to your mouth. And when it comes out as a kind of a glossolalia, you discover that in that space, you too can make jeweled objects with spinning interiors and reflexively rotating sub-themes and so forth and so on. So what seems to be being preached in the DMT encounter is the ontological transformation of, into a telepathic mode. Now, you may have thought telepathy was you hearing somebody else think. Apparently, that's not what telepathy is. Telepathy is you seeing what somebody else means. Not to look at, you know, larger social issues, simply because of a group that I represent and that I'm in. But I have to stay focused, and I try to stay focused on this small piece. I got AIDS, I deserve a joint. That's it. Right. Point blank. But, but, but by, that, by, That's doing it. That, by doing that one thing and focusing on one thing, you are spreading it so much farther than that. I mean, just the fact that I know about it, just the fact that I found out about it a couple of years ago, Howard Dover goes, uh, hey man, we're doing this uh, benefit for the You want to help out? I go, what the fuck? <laughs> and he goes, well, there's a place that you can go where you, you can, they actually dispense marijuana. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>
I'm just thinking of all the douchebags I gotta deal with to buy weed from. I'm buying weed in big quantities just so I don't have to talk to these dickheads. You know, I'm like, they, they went, hey man, how's the shop, dude? This isn't going to happen. Sure. I'm going to give you a ton of cash, and you're going to give me a bag of plants, sure. and then that, we're not going to talk for a while. I'm sure. going to find another guy, because I don't want you telling everybody you're selling me shit, because you're a fucking weirdo. You know? And then all of a sudden, he goes, there's this place, and they, they, they say you, get, you get a medical card, and then you go, and you can buy it there. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, I can help them? Fuck yeah! I'm like, what am I gonna do? And then I'm telling people about, I'm handing out lollipops, I'm like, Charles, this is the shit! And people are like, where do you get these? And I'm like, dude, I'll give you the name of a doctor. I'm always emailing people doctors' addresses. I'm like, just go! You know, and, and the it. reality of it is, a lot of people have been self medicating forever. Fuck yeah! But they had no idea of why at home, in their own privacy, they use cannabis. They had no idea. They had no idea it was because it does tone down the day a little bit. Because it does help you sleep a little bit so you won't have to go get that Tylenol PM, the Tylenol XM, the Tylenol, what other kind of Tylenols it's, do they have out it, there? It helps your perspective. Sure. It helps your perspective, it, without a doubt. It makes you see things just like, you know, you just get a little bit above the smoke and you just get a little better view. But what benefit? Oh, no, okay. Right. Okay. But Joe, but Joe, there's no yeah. benefit to anyone. No, there's no benefit. <laughs> you can't sell that benefit now. No, you can't sell that benefit for fuck. It, it helps, <laughs> benefits me. You know, what do you say to people that still, like the, the people that still use this argument where they're like, okay, THC may be a good drug, but they still have this idea that, uh, but that smoking something Dude, is not a legitimate. Right I thing. am the I'm the answer to that. I'm the perfect answer to that. I'm the answer to it makes you lazy. Dude, I work out at least five days a week. I was a U.S. national Taekwondo champion. I do jujitsu four days a week. I lift weights at least three days a week on top of that. I'm constantly active. I do stand-up comedy every fucking week and never take time off. Constantly writing material. I do Fear Factor. I was doing Fear Factor and The Man Show and jujitsu, smoking weed every fucking day. <laughs> every day. It helps me. It helps me in every way. It makes me more it makes me much more enthusiastic about things going, that I actually enjoy doing sure. much sure. more enthusiastic sure. so it doesn't like take away your motivation sure. Sure. it'll just take away your motivation to do something that fucking sucks but I think his question <laughs> I think his, I, I think I, but I think his question was was on the lines of one of the other false arguments that's thrown out there is the fact that you have to inhale it and smoke it but even if you do smoke it, I'm telling you, it doesn't hurt you. But the fact My is... My cardio is fantastic. There are those who choose to smoke it. Right. But there are those who... Can. There are better ways that you don't have to smoke yeah, it now. absolutely. The vaporizer is a wonderful thing. Sure. That's not smoking sure. it at all. That's lollipops. not getting it. The lollipops. Lollipops. The brownie. Shit. Brownie. Those lollipops, man, that's a smooth, mellow high mm -hmm. that lasts for hours. Mm -hmm. There's no... And the, I don't buy any of the damage on the lungs thing with the smoke. There's I don't no buy it. to that. If that was the sole argument, then there still is no justification for making the whole plan illegal. Absolutely. But I don't even buy the fact that it damages your lungs. I don't buy it. It's a different experience. Smoking the, the marijuana plant is very different than smoking tobacco or smoking cigarettes. It's just different. Mm -hmm. It has a different effect. It doesn't ever harm my... I, I've been an athlete my whole life. Sure. I feel zero... Pro I get high and do jujitsu all the time. Mm -hmm. All the, the best guys that I know get high and then work out. Well, it doesn't I, also... It's, the cannabis that, 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 that's here is natural and doesn't have the ammonia added to it. It doesn't have all the extra things added to it to give it a better flavor. It's a very natural product and therefore it won't have those.